around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? Just look at them doggone fairy dogs skittering all around everywhere, scurrying down all them holes. Well, what about them? Well, I was just wondering, did you ever give them much thought? Oh, I can't say that I have. Well, they ain't good for nothing. Not one cussed thing. You're right about that. But all they do is increase their self and pock up the prairie at them holes. Hey, you figuring on doing something about it, Chester? Well... Yes, Mr. Dillon, I thought I might just maybe write a letter to the government about it. Oh? Well, you go right ahead and do that. You think it'd do any good? Well, sure it would, Chester. The government would turn it over to the nearest marshal's office. Then I could turn it over to you right away. And you could spend your time rounding up prairie dogs. Well, I'm right down to it. I ain't such a hand to write letters after all. <laughs> Look yonder, Mr. Dillon. A buggy pulled up to the side of the road there. Yeah. Now let's see if anything's wrong, huh? What in the world would a lady be doing way out here all by herself? Now let's see. You need any help, ma'am? It's that rear wheel. It just seemed to give way. Uh, we'll have a look. In Wichita, they said this was a down buggy. You come all the way from Wichita? Alone? Without no man? Well, I I hope to meet him in Dodge City. Well, but it just ain't safe for a woman to go driving all over Kingdom Come without no man. Uh, Chester. Oh, yeah, I know, but it's just plain foolish. Chester, let's uh, have a look at the wheel, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's see here. Look at there. The pin that holds the wheel on the axle is gone. Uh-huh. Wonder that wheel ain't rolling away across the prairie till yet. Yeah. Well, there's not much we can do about it out here. No, sir. That needs some first-rate blacksmithing. Well, ma'am, looks like you're stuck here. Uh, can you ride a horse? Well, I, I've ridden a horse, certainly, but never on a saddle like that. Well, don't worry about it. We'll lift you up and you can sit sideways. Uh, we'll walk the horse in. It's not too far to dodge. Well, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not accustomed to traveling with gentlemen I don't know. Well, uh, I'm the marshal out of Dodge City, ma'am. Uh, marshal, I, I suppose it's all right then. My name is Sarah Howell. Oh, Mrs. Howell. There's Chester Proudfoot. I do, ma'am. It's Miss Howell, Marshal. I'm not married yet. As a matter of fact, you might be able to help me about that. Oh, how's that? I'm coming to Dodge City to find my fiancé, Marshal. And maybe you can help me find him. Maybe you even know him. Well, what's his name, Miss Howell? His name is Guy Porter. He's a tall man and very handsome. Do you know him, Marshal? Uh, no, ma'am, I'm afraid I don't. Are you, are you sure he came this way? He told me he was heading west. I... I have reason to believe he may be in Dodge City. Oh, a lot of people come and go in Dodge, ma'am. You'll help me find him. I know you will. Well, a man can lose himself out here if he wants to, you know. Oh, Guy isn't trying to hide from me, Marshal. He said he was coming back, and I, I know he meant it. No, I, I'm afraid something's happened to him. I'm afraid there's trouble. Well, if there's trouble, ma'am, I'd stand a better chance of locating him for you. Yeah, come on. Let's get going. 
you get back? Uh, just a little bit ago, Miss Kitty, and I don't mind telling you if I don't never take that ride to Park City again, I won't do no belly aching about it. <laughs> that is the one longest, driest, most no-count piece did of Did Matt come back with you? Uh, oh, yes, he did, Miss Kitty. He'll be in directly. Uh, uh, he's seeing to a lady down to Moss Molly's. Oh? Where'd he find the lady? Hmm. Park City? Well, no, that ain't exactly the way it was. It, it was more like that he found her along the way. <laughs> Curious thing. Oh, come on over to the bar, Chester. I'll buy you a beer to wash some of that dust down. Well, that is mighty friendly of you, Miss Kitty. Uh, this lady you brought in. Oh, do you want to hear about her? Chester will have a beer, Sam. Sure, Kitty. Sure do thank you, Miss Kitty. Go on about the lady, Chester. Uh, here you are, Chester. Oh, thank you, Sam. Chester, the lady? Oh, yeah, yes, well, uh, she come from Wichita, Miss Kitty, and she wants Mr. Dune to round up a man who's supposed to be out this way somewhere. Well, does Matt know who he is? No, he don't, but he wouldn't have no trouble recognizing him if he seen him. Tall and toe-headed. Followed him all the way from Wichita, she did. <laughs> I guess women folks can do that better than anybody. So what, Chester? It, recollect what a fellow looks like. Why, they can take just one look at a man's face and they got it stored away in their minds forevermore. How his teeth was set, the way his hair growed out. Why, man don't hardly have a chance. Well, I wouldn't worry about it. What do you mean? An awful lot of you get away. Oh, well, well, hey, there's a stage going down the street, ain't it? Well, it sounded like it to me. <laughs> yeah, well, then I better get down for the mail. Uh, thank you for the beer, Miss All Kate. right, Chester. See you later. Uh, yes, ma'am, I'll sure be back. Ma'am, I'll be upstairs for a while. All right, Kitty. Kitty. Huh? Can I see you a minute? Oh, well, sure, ma'am. What's on your mind? Well, that woman Chester was talking about. He say what her name was? No, Rance, he didn't. Why? Well, I just thought I might know her. I got kinfolk in Wichita. They was, they was talking about a cousin coming out here. Oh, well, I can tell you where she's staying. You could go down there and find out about her. That'd help, all right. Matt took her to Moss Smalley's, the boarding house on the south end of town. Thanks, Kitty. I'll go down there right off. What's the matter with you, Ranch? You come pounding in here like the devil's on your tail. <laughs> You better start worrying about that a little bit, Joe. What do you mean? You talked me into saying you could stay on here with me mighty nice. Claiming nobody saw you get away with that Wichita money. Well, that's right. Nobody did. Well, you should have looked back over the other shoulder. There's a woman asking all over town after you. What? She's giving you a description to the marshal. Right down to that pretty white hair. And he's looking for you, too. Now, you, you just got to get out of here, Joe. Now, just a minute, Rance. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? I know, all right. This woman's from Wichita. She's staying at a town boarding house, and she's asking about you. Now, I don't want no trouble with the law. Quit your balling, Rance. There ain't gonna be no trouble. But if she spots... She ain't gonna spot me. You gonna move on? No. She is. Tonight. How do you know? I'm gonna fix it, that's how. You know where this boarding house is? Yeah, well, sure. All right. You show me after dark. But now, you ain't gonna you do nothing. You want her to show me to the marshal? Well, no. Well, then leave it to me. Tell you too, Miss Howell. 
Tain't often one of my lodgers takes it in mind to help out with the chores. No, oh, I'd sooner not have idle hands, Mrs. Smalley. Oh, I am grateful to you. Would you care to come set a spell in the parlor when we're finished up? Oh, that's kind of you, but I think I'll just take a little stroll. You're going out walking. Well, whatever for? Guy, Mr. Porter and I, we used to stroll. We used to take lovely strolls in the summer evenings. Perhaps I might even run into him. Stranger things have happened, haven't they, Mrs. Smalley? Well, it ain't likely. But there's always a chance in this life, Mrs. Smalley. Always a chance. Well, you watch that you're back before it's full dark. Dodge City ain't the safest place in the world for a lady after nightfall. Oh, I don't think you need to worry, Mrs. Smalley. I've never been troubled that way. I'm sure no one would bother me. Mr. Porter used to say a man can always tell a lady. Mm, I'm sure that's so, my dear, but in this town, they just ain't particular if you're a lady or if you're not. Rance, here, come over here. Did you find out who she is? Do you know where her room is? I know who she is, all right, Joe. Her name's Howell. Come on, then. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. She ain't there. Ain't there? You listen to me, Rance. It won't do you no good to try to trick me away from doing this. Now, that ain't it. I swear it ain't. She went out for a walk. That's what they told me. Out for a walk? Well, why would... Wait a minute. What's the matter? Quiet. That must be her walking alone. And don't you do nothing, Joe. Don't you hear? You be quiet. Now you won't be talking about me or nobody else. Send somebody for you. Yeah, I just heard, Doc. How is she? Well, man, I don't know. There must be something about this town. I'm continually being called in to take care of somebody who ought to be dead, but isn't. Not quite. Does she have a chance? Well, any doctor in his right mind would say no. She shouldn't be alive, but she is. I don't know. She just may stay that way. Any idea who did it to her? I didn't have time to ask. Um, could I see her? Oh, no, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Would it hurt her? Well, no, I guess it won't hurt her, but it won't do you any good. She's, she's delirious, man. She just keeps moaning and calling for somebody named uh, Guy. She's not able to tell you anything. Mm. Well, I guess that's the way they wanted it. Thanks, Kitty. Well, it's hard to figure why anybody would do such an awful thing. What could that poor woman have done to anybody? I don't know, Kitty. It's pretty bad. Even for Dodge. She hasn't been able to tell you anything yet, huh? I don't suppose she will be able to, even if she gets well. Mm. It was dark, and whoever it was jumped her from behind. Dodge seems a strange place for a lone, middle-aged woman like her to come to, doesn't it, Matt? Yeah, especially when she said she came to find the man she was engaged to. Do you think he could have done it? I'm not even sure there is such a man, Kitty. Well, Rance Matson couldn't have been the one. He's much too young. Rance Matson? Yeah, you know, that young farmer lives out of town away. Oh, yeah, I know who he is. Well, what's he got to do with this? Oh, maybe nothing, but... 
He was in here earlier asking about the woman who came from Wichita. Thought she might be one of his kinfolk. Oh, what do you want to know? Her name, where she was staying. Matt, do you think... I don't know, Kitty, but I'm sure going to find out. sure wasn't anxious to be out on this road again so soon, Mr. Dillon. Seems like we ain't hardly been off it. Yeah. We could have stopped off at the Matson place yesterday just as easy on our way back from Park City. And it might have saved some trouble if we had, Chester. Yeah, come on, let's turn in here. Yeah. There's Ranch standing out in front there. Yeah. Adson, I want to talk to you. Well, he's running, Mr. Dillon. And where you are. Don't shoot again. Don't shoot. Next time I'll be aiming for you. Get his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. Now, look. Come on, Shalot. I don't want no more trouble. Chester, keep an eye on him. I'm going up to the house. Yes, sir. There's nothing inside. All right, come on out of there. Come on. There are two of us here. Don't shoot anymore. I'm, I'm hit. Then come on out. All right, Chester, let's try to patch him up. I huh? want him to last long enough to answer a few questions. about it as you can. She hardly has any strength left. Okay, Doc. Miss Howell? Miss Howell? Oh? It's Matt Dillon, Miss Howell. I, uh, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Oh, Marshall. Nice of you to come to see me. About, uh, about the man you were looking for. Guy? You, you found Guy? Well, we might have, Miss Howell. Guy. I knew I'd find him. Now, you said that he was a tall man. <laughs> tall, Marshal. Straight as a young tree. And yellow-headed. <laughs> he has light-colored hair, all right. And it, it shines in the sun. Well, uh, we found a man that looks something like that. When can I see him? Where is he, Marshal? Well, now, just a minute, Miss Howell. You, you might not be so glad to see him as you think. Oh, well, Marshal Dillon, you mustn't talk that way. I've never had a thought for any other man. No, ma'am, I didn't mean that, but... Uh, well, this man, he may have changed some since you last saw him. Oh, not Guy. He couldn't have. Besides, it was just a little while ago. I have to tell you, Miss Howell. This man is wanted for robbery in Wichita. And he... He may even be the man who beat you up. Oh, oh Marshal Dillon. I'm sorry, but that's the way it looks. What? Guy Porter never did a dishonest thing in his life. Where is he, Marshal? Let me see him. Well, I... I didn't know the way it turned out if you didn't want to see him after all. Please, Marshal. Bring him to me. All right, ma'am. She wants to see him, Doc. All right, man. Chester? Yes, sir. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Come on, now. Mind you, step off. Take your hat off in a lady's bedroom. Here he is, Miss Holmes. Guy? Guy? Come, come closer. Well, go on, step up there. Tall and slim. 
But you're old. Old. No. No, you're not, Guy. You're sure about that, man? Of course I'm sure, Marshal. Why, Guy's young. Young. He's only a couple years older than I am, Marshal. Young? Mr. Young. You better take him out of here, Chester. All right, Doc. Yeah, Doc, I'm, I'm ready to leave. Just a minute, Marshal, if you please. Yes, ma'am. I don't seem to have made myself clear to you about Mr. Porter, Marshal. Perhaps in the interest of preventing another unfortunate error... You don't have to talk anymore. No. I prefer to get things straight, Doctor. Guy Porter is a young man, Marshal. We grew up together. That's all right, Miss Howell. no. No, it certainly is not all right. You clearly don't understand. Bringing in that middle-aged man in those rough clothes. White guy would never let his uniform look so tacky. His uniform? Of course, Marshal Dillon. As long as the war continues, he'll be in uniform. Matt. Even though his regiment was ordered into the western wilderness... He'd never let himself look like that. But he better leave, Matt. I'll give her something. Yeah, Doc, you you do that. They ordered him west. And I waited and waited. And finally I came to find him. It was all right for me to come, wasn't it, Marshal? It was all right, ma'am. You won't make a mistake. And bring me the wrong man again, will you, Marshal? Just Guy. No, ma'am. I, I won't bring you the wrong man again. By jing, I tell you for sure, Mr. Dillon, I'm glad they sent a deputy to take that outlaw back to Wichita on the stage. I sure wasn't hankering to ride that road again so soon. Yeah. He was an awful mean one, beating up a lady like that. Is Miss Hal going to be all right, Mr. Dillon? I guess she'll get over the beating, Chester. But Doc doesn't think her mind will ever be any better. How could she go on like that all these years, thinking that fellow was coming back to her? I don't know. Yeah, memory can do funny things. Yeah, but Doc says she was carrying around a telegraph to the War Department sent her years ago, telling her this guy Porter had been killed. Yeah, I know. But she didn't want to believe it. No, she didn't. And I guess she never will. Directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Clark Gordon, and Ann Morrison. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.